All right, guys, so we're going to go over real quick. Um, this is kind of by the seat of my pants, trying to get this done for you guys. So um, here we have a 57 chip key. We're going to use um, chip quick to remove this chip, and then we're going to clean it, read it, read the information off of it, reset it, and solder it back to the board. Um, just showing basic uh, removal of the uh, surface mount device and installation and just double checking all your work. So we got a couple different camera angles. I'm gonna be show you as close up as possible. This chip has already been removed. You can see that the, the, everything looks a little bit different um, just cause it's not perfectly flush against the board. So um, either way, the procedure is still the same thing. Um, if you look at my temperature, I have my temperature on my soldering iron. Everybody has their own preference. I have mine set at 750 Fahrenheit um, just because What's always been taught, Patrick always uh, uh, talks about this, that hotter is colder because um, you can get in and out of there faster without heat soaking the, the board or the chip as much. So first step, chip quit. We're going to be using their no clean uh, solder flux paste. Actually, I actually like this the most. It just seems to leave uh, the cleanest residue. After done, it's not as tacky and easy to clean off with any of your contact cleaner. So we're going to go on both sides of the legs. Going to put our flux on there. Um, I, this is my soldering tip. Um, everybody has their own preference for soldering tip. This one has a slight angle to it. Uh, always make sure that your solder, soldering iron is tinned uh, and free of any kind of uh, residue. This one's angled so that it makes it easier for dragging and sometimes it can also hold a bit of solder on the the tip of it so we're just going to go through sorry guys camera moved a little bit going to put a little bit of chip quick on there and then we're going to drag it throughout um, this chip quick it melts at a, i think 130 five degrees and it re remains in a liquid state um, because of that we're able to um, remove the chip it stays in a nice see that it's still in liquid state and remove it set the chip to the side uh, you're going to want to take a picture too before you remove any anything off the board or solder anything to make sure that if anything moves it's staying or you can re reinsert it back in the same place it was before um, we use chip quick a lot because hot air works really well um, especially in the fact that you don't have to necessarily add or remove any of the solder you just use the same amount of solder and that's what the, the term rework comes because you're reworking the existing solder that's on the board. We use chip quick because it's a little bit safer. Um, it, it helps prevent um, heat soak of the whole PCB as well as the chip because you're working at a lower temperature. So right here we have our legs, our solder pads. We're just absorbing the excess solder and, and chip quick off the board. Um, so you want to work the direction of the pads themselves. So you do not lift the pad off, um, can happen. So go slow and make sure you have plenty of flux on the board. Um, if you do not have flux, it prevents it from dragging as nicely as you can see it's dragging now. So make sure it's nice and clean. The cleaner it is, that means your chip is gonna lay flush and flat. That's the the goal here, when you put it back on, you have a good contact. Okay, so we're gonna move this out of the way. I'm gonna move my camera down a little bit so we can have a closer look at our chip as we clean it. So there's our chip. You still see there's quite a bit of chip quick on there. So we're gonna give it a little more flux, grab our solder wick, and cut as you go to make sure that your wick is nice and fresh. 
So I'm working around this camera, so excuse me guys. So I'll try to do my best. You're just gonna wanna basically press your wick up against the legs themselves and drag as best as possible until you get majority of all the chip quick absorbed off of the actual chip. So I'm gonna flip it around, do the exact same thing on the other side. So absorb as much as we can. Okay. So there's our chip. We still got a bunch of flux on it. Going to want to clean it. When you have your flux on there, it's kind of shiny. So it's hard to tell whether or not you got all of your, all of the solder off the board and make sure that no None of your legs are touching. Okay. I'm using a solution called Pure Electronics. Um, you can get this at Fry's or online. This is a pretty strong solution. Some people use isopropyl alcohol in a little squirt bottle that works too. Whatever is going to remove the residue and make sure that you have a clean working condition. So here is our chip. So it looks fairly clean. I'm gonna flip them over. Look on the back side as well. Make sure that none of your legs have solder bridging the terminals. Because if we're gonna do a read or reset or anything like that, you wanna make sure it's nice and clean. So you can kind of see that it's fairly clean. Um, if you do see any kind of residue or um, solder still on there you're going to go back through add your flux clean it against solder wick and just make sure that all that stuff is gone okay so now we're going to hook up our diag speed and remove this back up here bird's eye view so here's our tool Plug in our 12 volt supply since we're working on bench. Okay. So you can see pin one is right here. Um, this is a 34 leg cradle. This is a 32. 30, 30? Yeah, it's a 30 legger chip. So we're gonna grab it. There's a nice little uh, recess, recess in here in the cradle so that I use um, nice um, tweezers. It allows me to set the chip in there. So I'm gonna press this down. I also want to add that this can be a little more difficult if you've had quite a bit of coffee to drink. Okay. Okay, our chip is now sat down in our cradle. Just going to open up our software. Software is open. We're going to drag this to the side. Open up Key Reader on board. Since we're not reading through the infrared, we're reading on board. We're going to read the key out and verify that we have a good connection. Okay, there you go. This key has already been reset, but I'm just showing you as demo purposes. We're going to read the key so we know that we have a good connection. 
you would then go into the section to reset the NEC chip. So that is based on the actual mass number on this one. I'm going to read it off to you. The last four digits are 0229. So right there, that would be our chip mast. So you would then select that. You would hit reset NEC. This one's already reset, so it took five seconds or less than that. Um, typically, can take um, up to a minute to reset. If it doesn't, um, you have two issues. Either your connection on board is incorrect or you potentially have a damaged chip. So it can happen. So after you would reset it, oops, you would go back in and read it. Um, just for a sake of time, we're just going to skip that and go to the next step. So we're going to remove this chip. We're going to move our diag speed to the side. And we're going to solder everything back together and test it. So here's our board again. There is some residue on there. At there is some residue on there. So that is okay. The reason for that is, is it acts as a stablement for our chip. When we go put our chip back on there, I always recommend just putting a little dab of flux back on the corners. Helps maintain the position of the chip. If it's a little tacky, it's great because these things like to, to walk around. Verify that you have the location of the number one pin correct. So right there we have lined up for the most part on both sides. So our soldering iron, we got some of our solder going to a tin or tip clean it and then just add just a little bit of solder you don't need a whole lot so we're going to start in the corner and we're just going to add a little bit of solder to the leg okay got one leg down do the other leg So just want enough to at least tack it in place. Okay, so we try to move it. Everything seems pretty sturdy. Then take your flux and go across both sides. And then we're going to drag. So you put a little bit of a ball of solder back on your tip. Just a little bit, you know, not too much. I'm going to start in one corner, slowly drag to the other side. If you need to add a little bit more just as you're learning. That's fine as well. So basically you're gonna just slowly drag, you wanna to get towards the base of where the pads are to the, to the actual legs. So we have a little excess right there, that's not a problem. Don't worry about that. I'm gonna to go to the other side. Okay, drag those legs as well. At any time you don't feel like your solder is, is actually liquefying and moving smoothly, you can always add more flux. All right? I'd rather have it move smoothly and everything get coated and all these legs get 
enough solder on than not enough. So it's okay to be generous with flux. So go back over each leg, make sure everything is good. Okay, so before you give anything a green light, so you might think that, okay, that looks good. You wanna clean it, remove our chip. contact cleaner because this flux can add a glossy tint to it so it's really hard to see whether or not the glossiness is actual flux or if it's actual solder bridging the terminal. I want to clean that as much as possible so you can get a better look at it. So I'm going to hold this up against here and we're going to look at the legs. A little bit closer. We got some decent solder on all of our legs on that side. Don't see any bridge terminals. I'm going to flip it over. Look at this side. Looks pretty good. I'm gonna put this back in the jig so we can get a really close up shop without my hands moving. Okay, so. What you also wanna make sure too is when you're looking at your solder, there will be a flat portion right here where it sits on top. I usually like to see it hang over and ball up on the, t on the ends so I know for sure that I have a good solder connection. Um, also, if you do not, if you see a dull finish, usually after you clean something really good and you absorb all the solder, you're gonna have a dull uh, finish from the actual contacts. Um, that could be a sign that you do not have enough solder on there. So when you have a shiny condition, that's, that's a good sign. That's the, the tin and everything that's in there that's reflecting. So go back over, thoroughly check all your joints, make sure everything looks nice and shiny. And then you can see a very good picture of the solder between the terminal and the actual pad. So everything looks semi-decent okay so at this point we're going to go ahead and put our key back inside our shell all right since these keys are powered up by the coil don't need a battery pack or anything like that installed it's our key back in our shell we're going to move our diag speed and insert the key Okay, let's open up our software. Oops, that wasn't the software I wanted. There we go. We're gonna go back into key reader. We're reading through the infrared now, so we'll read the key. Boom, okay. So since all of our data is erased, or there's no SSID, there's no key count, there's nothing like that, it's going to show, not read, but it should show you the version ROM. So if you're gonna program a key, you would then just load a generated key. Let me just go to my stuff folder and grab a random key file we can program. So we're gonna do some Motorola EIS, NEC chip key. We're gonna just choose version 51, loaded it. And we're gonna write through the infrared. Wait, write key. Give it some time. Write key is complete. Oop. 
accidentally hit right key again. It's okay. Let's go ahead and read it out. So there's all our information. So we have key version switch 57. It's unused because it's not activated to the car. It's been inserted zero times. It's key track position two. And then this is our SSID of the key. So you're all good to go from this point forward.